Oh, hi, folks. Well, it's that time of week again where we go and... Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Also known as the book of blah, blah, blah. And oh my God, are you in for a treat this week? And by treat, I mean a big bag of disappointment with a side order of stupid. Because why go out of your way crafting a fun and engaging story when you can go and just create filler content for your online platform and have that be a vehicle for your next piece of filler content? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I meant TV series. I'm looking at you, Disney. So far, we're three episodes deep, and we still don't even know what the basic plot is. No, that duty is reserved for episode four. It's like getting into a conversation with a hobo where he starts telling his story for 125 minutes just to finally get to the point at the end where he tells you he shits himself. That's basically the series, because 125 minutes is the sum total of the first three episodes. Anyway... This episode opens up with a watermonger named Lortha Peel showing up and telling Blah Blah Fett that nobody respects him. Much like the audience. I swear, sometimes I think the show has its own commentary talking about how bad Blah Blah Fett is at being Boba Fett. Because he's not. Anyway, the watermonger is complaining about a group of young ruffians that goes and modifies themselves with droid parts and they go and run amok through the streets of Bos Aspa, stealing his water. And that's when we're introduced to the youth of today, Hover Scooter Squad, also known as the Boba Rangers, because they look like the fucking Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh, and, and they're called the Mods. Now, if you're not familiar with the mod subculture, and you have no idea what I'm talking about, consider yourself lucky. The Mods are typically a bunch of dudes who dress like they're from the 50s, and wait for it, they ride around on Vespas. And they're equally just as annoying as the youth of today hover scooter squad. But I'm sure they're called mods because they modify themselves with droid parts. No, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fucking hover Vespas. On second thought, this probably is written by John Favreau. After all, he is old enough to know who the mods are. So Blah Blah Fett goes and confronts the youth of today hover scooter squad and he goes and talks to them. And he, he asks them, what, why are you stealing the water from the watermonger? And the reply is, well, he charges too much. And Blah Blah Fett's like, well, okay, that makes sense. Well, I guess I have no choice but to hire you then. You know, for reasons, which which makes the watermonger rather unhappy. Oh, and to top it all off, Boba Fett demands that he lower his prices. I guess supply and demand is nothing in the Star Wars universe. And then we get another episode of Dreams from a Back to Tank. Well, we go and find out that the Tusken Raiders that Blah Blah Fett went and lived with for a couple of years was murdered by the Speeder Bike Gang. With possibly the exception of strong female Tusken Raider warrior. Because this is Disney after all. And it's only acceptable to go and kill off a bunch of males. Because apparently, with the females, all the boob armor has been replaced with plot and agenda armor. And Dreams of a Back to Tank abruptly ends as Blah Blah Fett is being dragged out of his back to tank by the Wookiee Black Dandelion. So I bet you're asking yourself, how did this big black Wookiee manage to slip past everybody? Well, I guess he must be a ninja or something. Because literally nobody noticed him walking into the palace. Where's the guards, you ask? Don't know. And we're treated to another sanitized fight scene where there's absolutely no blood. And, ne and never mind the fact that the Wookiee gets stabbed several times. And remember all those guards that the Wookiee snuck past? They all went to go and check out Blah Blah Fett at the same time. I guess somebody must have rang the dinner bell or something. Or maybe they all collectively woke up from their nap. Oh, and you're gonna love this one, folks. Nobody dies or gets injured. Ne never mind the fact that in episode 4, the Wookiee goes and rips somebody's arm off. Also with no blood, but nobody gets a, nobody gets a scratch. Fuck you, Disney. Seriously, that Wookiee should have murderated all of them. Somehow, they managed to drop the Wookiee into the Rancor pit, and they all lived happily ever after. Then the Hut Twins show up, and they're like, 
Oh yeah, sorry, um, sorry about that. We, we didn't mean to send Black Carnation Instant Breakfast after you. Uh, it's all it's all a big misunderstanding. Oh, by the way, the mayor promised Jabba's territory to another syndicate, most likely the Pike Syndicate. So to make bygones be bygones, here's a new Rancor monster for your empty Rancor pit. Oh, and by the way, it's depressed. And then they're like, fuck it, we're out of here. Oh, and get this, Blah Blah Vet decides to go and release Black Carnation Breakfast because, well, he's no longer a threat. N never mind the fact that he just tried to kill him previously in the other scene. Nope, all good. He can go now. Anyway, Blah Blah Fett decides to go and bond with his depressed Raker monster. Because he's totally the guy that cares about the well-being of animals and not the type of guy that would go and randomly disintegrate people like he used to do. You know, that one thing that's canon and Empire Strikes Back that everybody seems to be forgetting about? He's totally not a nice guy. But spending four years with the Tusken Raiders has rehabilitated his image. Are you fucking kidding me? After going and spending some alone time with his Rankum monster, Blah Blah Fett decides it's probably a good idea that he should go and visit the mayor. And he also brings the Youth of Today Hover Scooter Squad with him. To make an already boring story even more dull, the Major Domo goes, Oh yeah, the mayor's busy right now. And then they find out that he's not, that the, the mayor already took off. And then we're treated to the slowest speeder chase in all of Mos Espa. Oh my god! This scene is terrible! It's like watching the equivalent of a cinematic abortion. It looks so bad and it's filled with so many chase tropes. Come on! Christ almighty, Favreau, you wrote the movie Chef, which was good. What's wrong with you? And then Pike starts showing up in droves and Boba Fett decides that it's time to prepare for war and a piece of my soul died. Oh, that's right, I forgot. I don't, I don't have a soul anymore. I hocked into some guy named Stan. Anyway, something died and I'm pretty sure it was Star Wars. Oh, that's right, I, I forgot. That, that was already done by Rian Johnson who smothered the death with a pillow called The Last Jedi. Maybe it was the audience or the future viability of this franchise. I don't know anymore. Oh, and get this. The episode ends with Boba Fett saying, keep an eye out. And he says this to the guy with the cybernetic eye replacement and then promptly apologizes because, you know, that was really insensitive of him. What the fuck? Anyway, that's the episode. Now suddenly I have an urge to pound a 12 inch spike through my orbital socket. That's a joke YouTube, calm down. Thanks for watching, make sure to like, share and comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. A huge thanks to all the Subscribestar supporters. Without you, Comics Division would probably be crying in a corner somewhere. Well hello there big spenders, Roger the Shrubber and Toxic Man Blue. I'm a sucker with a lot of dough, Crazy Cat Guy, Mr. Grant Gregory, DJ O, and David Blair. Take my money, damn it! Commander Ed Straker of Shadow, Terminus S, Elagabalus, Various M, Commenting is Dangerous, Salty Texas C, LDH27513, Subscriber number 22F2C6C3, Javo, Dexy Doodle, Mech AG94, and That 70s Rock Fan. I'll buy that for a dollar. User 4E144CB6, TZ Canadian, Chris from the 80s, Stand 4, John B, Colin Douglas, and Jenna Lynn. Thank you all for watching. You are awesome.